Good morning. Good morning, Jesse. You're the first one here. Uh, S.O. Swanson may not be here today. He has other things going on. There is something I've been coming across lately that I think that people may be interested. Everybody's getting worried about food for their quail. Well, you can look into some of the ground, fruit co ground covers. Like um, pru prunus. Pumulus variation, depressa, a.k.a. prostate sand cherries. They grow in zones three to eight. And the fruit, you can always pick it for your quail. Uh, I'm not going to try to continue trying to pronounce the um, Latin names for these, but the running service berry, which is in zone four to eight. You can buy and it's self fertilizing and it's the running service berry and it goes only to four to five feet high and uh, birds can eat that you also have the yuva ursula also known as the bear berry, and they can it can muck the neck, and that is good for feeding um, your birds. That's only about three inches high, and it can grow up to six feet wide, and it grows in sh shady areas and self fertilizing, and those berries you can pick for um, your quail. You also have the ground hugging black chokeberry, which is good for quail, good for birds. But these are all ground covers that you can grow for the bare spots of your ground. And um, that gives you free food for your birds. Good morning, Jesse Mills. Jesse Mills says, good morning, everyone. First one. And Woman of Spirit says, good morning, beautiful quail people. Jesse says, good morning, Woman of Spirit. And I say blessings, everyone. But I wanted to get that in there about looking to the fruiting ground covers that you pop, put in the bare spots of your gardens or your property to keep uh, weeds from growing. And most of the fruiting ground covers are edible for birds and other wildlife. So that's something that you can look at if you're worrying about the price of feed. Another thing that I found interesting is you can get, you can grow amaranth. And amaranth is a grain that you can eat yourself or you can feed it to your birds. And the heads of grain are so big. Thank you. We have four people here and three likes. So somebody didn't give a like. But that's okay. Maybe they weren't interested in the boring way I started this morning. That's okay. But uh, let me see if I can find that link so you guys can know about the fruiting gown ground covers so you can watch it and yourself and end up learning more uh, let's see
Okay, here's an interesting one for your watch. Jesse says, hit my like before commenting. I always hit it first so I don't forget. <laughs> But you watch that, and she's coming up with at least 15 covers. And most of them are edible to the birds and other wildlife. And that could help you out with a feed. I got one small cage of birds that I got a murderer inside of it. And I can't find it because she never does it whenever I am watching. I got two birds in recovery pen and she's already killed two others. I got some freeze-dried quail soaking in the refrigerator and I'm going to throw that in with my carcasses and make some good quail and noodle soup. I think I'm going to make homemade noodles out of the cookbook. Which is just quail eggs and flour. I'll get to use my pasta roller. So what are you two up to, to this morning? There's four people here and only two have talked so far. Good morning, those lurking. Is everybody using supplemental light? Well, uh, Jan says, I love homemade noodles. Yeah, with the surplus of eggs I got. I'm using string lights. That is great. Use the string lights instead of rope lights. Do you have your birds inside? Or are you using the ex outside string lights? They're outside. Okay. This is the cup I'm using today is Reese's. Reese's. Reese's Pieces. This week I got 226 eggs. Greg Morris, nice cup. Hi, Greg. How are you this morning? But that link I put in there is about fruiting ground cover. And I mean, even if you just took a bunch of birds and put them in a little cage around that plant, that'd be extra food. For them, even if you don't feel like getting down on your hands and knees and picking it. And 
And right now, my freeze dryer is taking a little break. I'll get that started. It's been off for two days, so now I'm going to start it up this afternoon and freeze dry two pineapples that I got to cut up yet. And I gave my quail some cranberries yesterday. Some like it and some don't. Well, the spirit says, I have mulberry bushes. The quail and rabbits love the leaves. They would love the fruit, too. Jess Mills says, the only quail I have at the moment is Loretta's Jumbo White. I'm waiting on Zach to ship eggs for my new breeders. I called all my breeders before QuailCon, and so the last of the young ones I had. I'm getting ready to call everything I have, too, and then get some eggs off of Zach again because... My breeders are over three, uh, I've had this line for over three years and I'm seeing some problems. One of them is, I've got like that, a murderer in the group and she's a sneaky one. She goes straight for the eyes. Goes through the eye to the brain. And so when you get to that point, you just say, well, time for new blood. Jesse says, at the auction, I want to switch to certain colors together rather than mixed colors. I was doing, I was planning to get eggs at Qualcomm, but everyone beat me to them. LOL. Oh, boy, Jesse, everybody beat you to all the eggs. I didn't even get a chance to uh, uh, tour the quail barn. let alone find out what the new colors were or anything. Well, uh, I sold, uh, Six call birds and two dozen of eggs this week. The one that wanted a breeding pair ended up not coming for one reason or another. So I've been doing a little research on other things. Yeah, it says, I have a nasty hen. Turn her out and put her in a single cage with one now. She met her match now, calm as can be. I got it, like I said, I got a sneaky hen that is killing everybody off. And she does... There's no way that I know which one it's doing, and I sit there and watch them. It's like it's happening during the night. Like when, uh, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So for when the lights are off, that must be when she's doing her dirty deed. Kind of reminds me of Jack the Ripper. Two of them, the first two she killed were males. Now I got a hen in recovery because she attacked a hen. She's got 50 each. Bad fee, autumn, amber, gold, and pearl order. When they go back 
on after the first of the year, I'll just order I'll order jumbos. Yeah, it says put a security camera on the cage. I don't have any security cameras. If I did right now, I would have it in my hallway because of the psychopath that lives next door on the bottom. It's a guy that keeps, every time the landlord picks one of his windows, he'll break another window. He talks to people and he follows me and stuff like that and it bothers the heck out of me. And just now, there's no babies yet. She's big, but I haven't seen any babies. I'm kind of wondering if maybe there's something else wrong with her. But it felt like she had two babies in her when I picked her up that time. But the other problem with putting a security camera on, I wouldn't be able to tell because all the ones in that cage are double wilds. Greg, what, Greg Morris, what type of quail do you have? I have the Jumbo Feral and, or Jumbo Wilds and uh, Jumbo White Wing Ferals. You know, I put those the quail breasts in water last night. Let me get them and see how they um, show you guys how they rehydrate. Excuse me, Lucy. No, they're not rehydrating very well. Well, they'll go in the pressure cooker. Let's see, it looks like how it was when I put it in. I think quail is better if you cook it before you 
put it in the freeze dryer. Go ahead, I have not got my project off the ground. Are you working on cages yet? If you're working on cages, uh, remember, uh, you put three birds per square foot. That way, when you go into cages, you get um, put as many birds as you're trying to. To what size your cage is? Let's say if you do a cage that's two foot wide by six feet long, that's twelve square feet by three. It'd be 36 birds you can put in that same cage. And that gives you enough for water and um, feed bowl. Have you been watching a lot of the My Shire Farm? Um vlogs because he does have a lot more than I do right now and he's he got in there from cages on up and if you want to research cages depending on if you want your birds inside or outside I can advise you to places that will um give you perfect cages for that areas because Dale's quails he sends you cage kits where they're pre-built and you just have to assemble them let me see if I can get that for you Okay. Here's the best one trying to for outside cages. That's the best place to get them. For our inside cages, Like in a garage or in your house or in a shed or whatever. This is a good one. And if you watch my Quilcon speech, that'll give you some information too. Otherwise, just throw your questions at me and I'll do my best to answer. And it's got pretty quiet. Another thing you got to remember is you got to figure out the quail math to how many people in your family to how often you'll have to incubate to be able to feed your family quail however many times a week or month that you want them to eat quail you also have to decide on how many eggs you want to get a a day for either incubation or 
um, consuming and a good place the only place that I really recommend for ordering eggs and things is through here that's the only place I buy my eggs from Unless you want celadon eggs, and then you go to whisk, whiskeytangofarms.net. Because since I've been raising quail, there's no chicken products that come into my house. Except when I don't feel like cooking and I order from either Papa John's or Domino's and order their uh, chicken wings and breadsticks. That's the only chicken that comes in my house. And, you know, Greg, I studied freeze dryers for a year before I bought one. Welcome back, Jan. I studied quail for about a year before I finally asked somebody, uh, how can I order eggs? Because at the time, and he, poor guy didn't know about sending, sell, sending eggs in the mail. And, but enough hats that got me out curious that fed my curiosity so that's how I started out and then when I found out about my Shire Farms and that was after going through other places that kind of sent me bad birds where they were deformed and everything else from too much inbreeding But Zach and Jenna's got the, in my opinion, the best birds. But if you, uh, if they're worried about feed and everything, the feed prices are going up. If you just can grow a couple amaranth plants, which is an ancient grain, and some of the ground covers that I mentioned earlier, then that could really help cut your feed bill. Gidro's Urban Home said, Good morning, everyone. Late, but we made it. Good morning. Better late than never. No attendance taken, but I love those thumbs ups. If I could end up getting 20 thumbs ups, I would be ecstatic. But that would mean everybody would have to hit everybody they know and tell them to come on and watch it. <laughs> so how everything is at, how is everything at Gidro's homestead? And good morning, Lane. I know you're watching it with Mama. My little buddy. And I can't wait until next quilt con to see him again. See how much he's growing. 
Gidros says, Quail in the grow out cages are doing fine. Just finished feeding all the animals. Lane says hi. Lane gives out beautiful hugs. They're so heartfelt. He's my little boy. Want to help me? Jan says, Berna, I took some of the liquid off of my forest cider and made some pickled eggs. Oh my goodness, they are packed full of flavor and heat. Oh, okay, fire cider. Oh, yes, I've got to make some fire cider yet. And I'm going to make it with some of that organic cider that I've got. That's got a little bit of the mother in it. Let's see. So this is the cider I'm going to use to start with. So if I remember correctly, the fire cider has to set for a month before we can do anything with it, right? There's Jasmine, Th uh, Time in Timber Homestead. Good morning, sunshine. Yeah, you're the sunshine. You make everybody's world light up. But Lane's got your beat. He makes your heart swell. <laughs> Aaron says, how's the temps over there? We had a few days that went to the 50s at night. Today will be 80. Well, we had a few days that went below freezing. And now the highs are in the 70s. Jasmine says, oh, are we talking about fire cider? I'm making some today. Jan says, it is better aged a month, but can be used after a few weeks. Yeah, I'll, I'll age mine for a month. Because the way I do that is I, out of sight, out of mind. And Jasmine says, hey, Aaron, tell Mr. Lane I said hello. Aaron says, Lane says, hi, Jasmine, smiles. <laughs> what do you put in your fire cider? Well, I'm going to be following Jan's um, recipe. And my garlic has already sprouted. And it's about that high up already. And I got to water my fig tree, my garlic. Jess she uses, I mean, Jasmine says, I use cayenne peppers, ginger, garlic, onion, horseradish, with raw ACV. Well, this is the ACV I'm going to use to start with. Got a little bit of the mother on the bottom. So I think I'm going to order 
a bunch of stuff to put in mine. I got one gallon container I can put it in. Jasmine said, perfect, Berta. Yeah, that's what I'm going to start it with. Unpasteurized, but I can't see it. What's uh, what the reading is on it? How much acid? Yeah, that's what I'm going to start it with, but I'm going to have enough stuff in it. It's going to be a lot bigger. Uh, Jasmine says, I have used Bragg's, and I like all these raw apple cider vinegar. I've also made my own apple cider vinegar. Super easy, but it does take a long time. I know I have some apple cider in there I might add to it, to this, but I don't really, I didn't write that apple cider because it didn't have any other junk in it. Judge Mill says, I just looked. The auction I got the piggies at was June 25th. The sale barn got sold since the auction, so the page was gone. So I had to go through messages to find it. I didn't realize I had them that long. Oh, yeah. So she's probably not pregnant. She's just fat. So I'm going to put her with uh, one boy and put the other girl with another boy. But they're already biters. Five percent acidity for raw ACV. Okay. So I might get a jar. I might get this jar and add it to the apple cider I got in the refrigerator, and make that into apple cider, and put that up in my cupboard where I forget it. And then. Um, Get another bottle of this to put in to make my fire cider out of. And says, hi, Jesse. And Jesse says, hi, Gidros and Jasmine. Good. We got five people and five likes. That is great. So today we're going to eleven o'clock instead of twelve. So this is what we can look like, Verna. Well, I have my helper coming in cleaning cages today because he cleans them every six days. Uh, I've got to put pine and cut pineapple up and put it in the deep in the freeze dryer. And I have to call a bunch of birds for this weekend. Because I think I'm going to call them all out and just uh, start new next month by getting some eggs from Zach. Um, let me see. And I got to get my new desk put together. Jasmine says, I have fresh quail chicks in the brewer. Cool. So I have, let me see, 
I don't I don't even want to count how many quill I have. But I'm going to clean them all out. Jazza says, nice. I have 60 pansy peas from Zach in the incubator right now. Jan says, anyone dry quail wings in the uh, in cornmeal? No, because I would worry about that. Jazza says, are you just sticking with jumbos, Berna? I usually get them for meat and eggs, so yeah, I usually stick with jumbos. I think I'm going to get some jumbo whites and the new white wing barrels, you know, the ones that's been protected, because I got those, the other ones, a year ago. And Jazza says she dries quail wings in borax. That's what I do if it's not for animal consumption. If it's for animal consumption, put, put them in your dehydrator. With me, I use my freeze dryer, and I do the wings, the skulls, and the innards for Lucy or crafting. Like the next, with my cloth on, I'm going to dry the wings out in shape so they can be crafting. Yeah, the jumbo white wing barrels are pretty. I, I really love them because when you hatch your eggs, you can either get jumbo white wing barrels or jumbo barrels. Jasmine says, can you dry them in baking soda? I would think that would be safe and non-toxic. Uh, yeah, you could probably use baking soda. I don't think borax is actually toxic. It's just that it's something you don't want to knowingly feed to your animals. It won't kill them because boric acid won't kill them. And, but it kills like cockroaches and other insects. But I just put them in my freeze dryer and they... Because what I'm calling, I just cramp everything together and on a tray. Then I'm going to freeze dry for... The dog. You saw people using cornmeal, salt, and borax. I found pi five pounds of cornmeal for 25 cents. Well, you know what? Won't hurt if you try it. The worst that would happen is it might attract some mice. Yeah, Jasmine, borax, it's a, a Jasmine says borax is a toxic true, but not ideal to feed in unmeasurable amounts for pets. Love the discussion, though. Yep, I agree. It's not toxic, but it's not, you wouldn't intentionally want to feed it to your pets. Just because something isn't toxic doesn't mean that it won't cause problems if there's excess heck even things that are good for you if you give it an excess it becomes bad mice are mealybugs are those grain moths attracted to cornmeal hmm Time to head to work. We'll be listening in. Okay, Jesse, have a safe trip and a blessed day. Oh, in about another hour, I'll be able to open my window. Jesse says, drive safe. I mean, Jasmine says, drive safe, Jesse.
Kendra says, I have a, a day full of cleaning, poo trays, and puppy training. Yep, yeah, you have to be strong with that puppy. I got a gentleman comes in for $10. He cleans all my trays, the guinea pig trays and the um, quail trays. I just heard my phone go off, but I don't see it. Oh, there it is. I forgot I had it on the charger. Oh, none. Nothing to worry about. Jesus Inferno, we took him to the vet on Tuesday, and Koa weighs 36 pounds. Well, he's getting close to Lucy's weight. Lucy's about 50, 45 to 50. Okay, everybody, time to run and get coffee. Okay, I got my coffee. Let me see. You got more coffee too. Jasmine says she's got more coffee too. I think everybody else is sleeping right now. Five cups of coffee. Five people in the room. <clears throat> so I'll probably do 12 more birds tonight. Jeffrey says, oh, I pulled up our sweet potato harvest a couple days ago. I hope yours turned out better than mine did. How much sweet potatoes did you get, Jasmine? We got a good amount, about 60 pounds. That is great. Were they nice size or were they small? But Vol's gotten too many of them. What's the difference between bowls and balls?
Ah, okay. Voles live uh, above the ground, and voles is like a blind mouse. Yeah. And they get, they look like a mouse, whereas a mole doesn't have the pointy nose and stuff. They really don't have much of a tail either. <coughs> the Barracoons have been doing a great job controlling them now, though. That's good. <coughs> yeah, bulls are above ground and moles are underground. There's more underground there. Lucy's good at catching moles. You don't even see a mound, but she'll she'll hear them, and she reaches into the ground and just pulls them out. Jazz yeah, says most of the sweet potatoes are good size, nothing giant, but many that could have good to grow longer but oh well basically free food yeah i'm gonna when i get sweet potatoes next i'm gonna put one i'm gonna start one to do slips with and i'm gonna start them early because yeah yeah this is lol lucy the mole catcher First time she did it was not long after I first got her. And she reached to the ground and she tossed the mole and I was wearing a crushed velvet jacket. And it clutched onto here and with my PTSD I just seen something flying at me and it freaked me out. And I'm yelling, Lucy, no, no, no. And so now the one she does it, she holds them in her mouth. She doesn't throw them at me. But usually I can get her before she actually pins it to catch one. But I learned watching her body when she was about ready. She could hear them scraping underground. And it is comical. Yeah, even at nine years old, she can still catch them. Wait a minute, she turns 10 this month, so she might as well say she's 10 years old. She doesn't act like she's 10 years old, though. And she loves to chase cats. You don't want to catch them. Honey dog mix in her magical three cars for our honey marlins. Well, yeah, because she is a sight hound, but the sight hound uses their ears and their eyes. Because I'm light with no coffee and a headache, so I guess howdy from Missouri. Glenn, you said hi. Go get your coffee. That might help you. Well, what was that? I love Virginia. I just got here, so. so as more people are here, I'll stay longer. Seven people here and seven likes. I like that. Now if we can get other people to come in. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I figure that's going to probably start buying in. November, start growing slips in November, 
then I'll have a better chance because last year I got a late start. And I'll just transplant them in one pot until they're big enough to go into the grow bag. And it's warm, warm enough to go into the grow bags. What I wish I could get is some of those purple um, sweet potatoes. I'd love to try those. Back on the worst, I put a grow light in the quail room. Or should I call it the livestock room now? You're in the same growing growing zone I'm in, Jasmine. We're six B two, if I remember correctly. Let me double check here. Let's see. A growing zone is Franklin. Oh, we're six A, okay. Well, you're a little you got a little bit longer than I did. I start my slips in January, but I'm in zone B. Yeah, you have a little bit longer than I did. I have I, we're at six um six A. Vicky says, good morning. Sorry I'm late. Preparing to teach a quail calling class in an hour and excited to be going to a meat canning class next Saturday. Jasmine says, still, that's pretty close. Yeah, but that little A and B is a slight difference. Congratulations, Vicky. Such an important thing to teach. You know, that's what I need to do is I need to uh, have put on Greg List calling class. Well, butchering class. And put that in educational. Since I got so many birds, maybe I'll just wait and do that. Because then I just charge them for how many birds they want for themselves to eat. Yeah, I have to harvest mine indoor. Being in an apartment. I had one calling class outside. But it being in the winter. You know, I don't know what next weekend's going to be. Last time I did it, the people bought 11 quail. So that was 66 bucks I earned. And I only processed two of them. <laughs> Jesus said, all right, Miss Berna, my chores are calling my name. Glad I got to chat and have coffee with you. Have a wonderful weekend, my friend. Jasmine, you have a very blessed weekend. I did my chores before I sat down this morning. And Lucy's behind me snoring. She stopped when I said her name. <laughs> we love you too, Jasmine.
You know, you're going to love your canning classes next Saturday, Vicki. She's not here, but Katrina from So and Hair, uh, she has uh, a, canning, a video of canning rabbit and quail. <coughs> And she did both the dry pack and the hot pack. I mean, the cold pack and the hot pack. They love the hot pack the best when they taste test them. And I don't, I don't can, I freeze dry everything. So I found out some vegetables that I can't eat being toothless. I can't eat them just plain raw. But if I freeze dry them, it makes it so I can eat them. I mean, I love raw carrots. I can't eat raw carrots straight out of the garden unless I shred them. And, but if I cut them up to fit into the freeze dryer, I can eat them and they still taste like raw carrots. Oh, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to make making a bunch of soup and broth. And I'll start it off in my one pot. I mean, my Instapot. Then cook it down a little bit more on the stove. And then put it in the freeze dryer. Because when I make soup in that, there's no way one person can eat all that soup at one time. Because I don't know how to cook for one. All I know how to cook for four or more. Because my belated husband could eat enough, could out eat three other normal men. I wish I was in quail when he was alive. He would have loved it. But I didn't know anything about quail 20 years ago. And I would never have enough eggs and, 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 and quail to sell the outsiders. On the property, because <laughs> his garage was a little tool. He had a two-car-own garage, and you could walk in, and he had so many tools in there. And so I would have to walk a one-car garage in there just for my mail. Or put them in one of the rooms upstairs that we had. Vicki, how many quail are you planning to call during your calling class? And do you charge per bird that's going to be called or a uh, one calling fee? Curious minds want to know.
Glenn, did you get some coffee? Or tea or something? And something for that headache yet? Well, we got eight likes and five people still with us. But nobody is talking today. This is no got pot of water, forgot the coffee, waiting for round two. Oh boy. I've done that before, but you know, you can take that hot water and make some. Uh, uh, Pour it in a container and put some tea bags in there and have tea for later. See, I, feed, I get up in the morning, get dressed, take Lucy for a walk. When I come home, I feed her, put on a pot of coffee. Then I take care of the guinea pigs and the quail. And you know, the guinea pigs are more work than the quail are. They want you to feed them every time you turn around. They want something. Water or feed. Because can't don't have the good feeding system and watering system that I have for the quail. So I'm going to have to figure that out how to get a better watering system for them. And Jan says she's still here, but she's just listening. Erin says, this is the first Saturday that I'm not cooking while watching. Cleaning my grill to cook some chicken and ribs later while watching. Ah. Uh. What kind of ribs? Are they going to be pork ribs, beef ribs, or lamb ribs, or goat ribs? Pork ribs. Aha. Uh -huh. I forgot venison ribs. <laughs> it is starting to be deer season soon, isn't it? Here we have gnats that are causing us to have zombie deers. And that's in three counties around here. My county being one of them. Up in Houston Woods and stuff like that, so it's far enough away from me, I don't see them. I don't see her at all. I miss that. Now, early in there, I posted a link where you can watch for the ground club, ground cover, fruit bearing ground cover. That is that would help you with feeding your birds next year. Jesse says you can get nipple waters like for rats. They will work for guinea pigs. I use them when I raise rats and mice. Same as quail hooks them onto the bucket in the out of water system. That's what I was thinking, Jesse. I don't like the style that I got from um, 
one place because it could only fit a low because it would clip onto the actual container that you pour the water in and it had leaking problems and stuff. Aaron says it's close to deer season here. I still have some deer meat in the freezer that I need to cook so I can restock. My goal is to make all of my own deer sausages and ground meat this season. Hey, Aaron, get some dry ice and you can ship some of that deer to me. I haven't had deer in too many years because my daddy died. He was the hunter in the family. I never married a hunter. Get a hold of me and uh, tell me how much you want for some of that extra meat and I'll I'll pay you for it. Oh, that's cool too. Yeah, if you order that meat, I pay for the shipping and everything. Because I know they, they um, the right insulation, they, they ship out foods like HelloFresh and stuff like that. But I'd be glad, yeah, Aaron, I'd be glad to do it. Jesse says, it's been a while since I've bought them i'll try and find where i bought them from after work and send it to you okay jesse now uh, you're talking about the waterers i got one from premier one and um it's okay. It's just I can't get it to go up high enough so they don't, so they're not um, standing on it and stuff. There's this Jesse. I get all my waters on Amazon and box. Well, rabbit quail well, and chicken waterers. That's probably what I have to do is look on Amazon. Because water balls are filling up the water balls three times a day. Whereas I only have to fill up my five gallon bucket for the quails about every two or three days. Aaron says, my new quail cages, I think I'm going to set it up with the Winola Ranch water troughs. Yeah, those are great. That way you use that five-gallon bucket, and depending on how many birds you got on that system, to how often you have to fill it. And if you have them outside where you can use the holes and keep water on, um, you can get a float valve for inside the bucket so that that even stays filled all the time. The only thing, Erin, when you build your system using the Winola Ranch cages, I mean water troughs, uh, have, a, have it so that you can leave the line there once in a while. Because if you got any calcium or anything like that in your water, 
it will plug out those valves there if, if it's the bottom valve eventually. For my gravity water system, I have three tanks that are 35 gallons each. Oh well, I don't have I don't have um, tanks like that. It would be neat if I did, but I don't. I would have had ten gallon water systems. Then I might be able to go five or six days. I'll be right back. I have to get some more coffee. Okay. This is the new quail cages. I read about that. Turkey and pheasant don't drink as much as quail and chickens. I wonder why. They probably eat more stones. Okay, this is where if you guys want to order uh, wire at wholesale, I'll post a link where, um, you know, fencing and all that kind of stuff, where Zach get his at. What's wrong, Lucy? I said your name too often and it kept you awake. Go night night. Go take a nap. Pretty soon those shelves behind me are not going to have um, books in them because I'm getting rid of all the books that I don't want anymore. And they'll be holding all my freeze dried bags. Okay. So what else is anybody doing this week? This is a quail in the brood will eat more than an adult does it. But the meat ratio could turn a quail wins. Oh, I agree. That's why they eat more, because they have to put more meat on them. And how long does it 
for a peasant to reach maturity. Since I've still got three more wire pages to finish. Sixteen so far. That's cool, Glenn. How big are your cages? Aaron, how many weeks to maturity for this week we have 124 quail eggs to lock down tomorrow and put another 124 in the incubator. I wish I had half the food you had. The pheasants take 20 to 26 weeks to mature. Oh my goodness. That's about the same as the chicken, isn't it? Okay, Glenn's cages are 3 inch by 24. So that's 2 by 2.5 feet. Wait a minute. Yeah, 2 by 2.5 feet. So that's 15 birds each. Yeah, 15 hens and three three roos in each cage. If all you're feeding in that is outside. If you're feeding waters or outside, you can get it 15 hens and, and three birds per cage. Yours is just about as, as long. I only raise them because they are pretty. They are not friendly and are difficult to raise or integrate new birds in. Yeah. Well, see me, I got rid of my celadon because I can't have them just because it's pretty. Celadons are usually not troubles. And so... And they seem to have a lot of meat the standards. So that's the reason why I get rid of the celadons. Because I can't have birds that just the aspect. Everything I have had to have felt at least two qualifications and that's food and beauty. That's even when I do my gardens. It has to provide a use in order for me to plant it. Like when I had an actual garden in my yard before I moved down here, even then I only plant what could be you eaten. But if you got patience for that, Aaron, more power to you. Because I know pheasants, the only pheasants I've been around is wild pheasants that would come into my yard and, and visit me. I says, being pretty is the only reason Christina keeps me around. <laughs> only have a few species that we keep because they are pretty. I do profit from pheasants. $10 for a week old and $100 for adult trios. Well, that's good. You know, that's providing you income.
yeah, doing that is great. How much does an adult pheasant weigh? See, around here, I would have to have a permit for that, for pheasants. Liz has lost one of my bunnies the other night. Must have hung on to mom. She left the nest, nest spots and got cold. Temperatures got down to 20 degrees. Oh, that is sad. I'm sorry, Glenn. Aaron says they average around a pound or so. Yeah. Is that called weight or, or or with the feathers and everything? Because if that's with the feathers and everything, then you're getting about a half a pound of meat at the, I mean, of uh, processing. Aaron says, Glenn, I put a baby saver strap on my nest box. I hate to lose the baby rabbits. That's called weight. Okay, so that's pretty good. About a pound or so is good. Jesse says, I picked up a trail of buff Isabel pheasants last week at the auction for $45. So you got a good deal there, Jesse. What I love about pheasants is the male's tail feathers. They're just about as pretty as an ostrich feather. I mean, as a peacock feather, rather. Aaron says, Jesse, I need to go to your auctions. We don't have small animal auctions locally. That's probably why I do so well selling animals. Yours is the nearest auction house is three hours away. It's just big sheep and cattle. Yeah, I would like to know where there's a small animal auction as well.
Ashley says, Glenn, what kind of rabbits do you raise? I would like to know what type of rabbits everybody has and why they chose those rabbits. Love, baby. Oh, you're such a pretty little girl. Yes, you are. Mommy's baby. You got another half hour yet. And then I'll take you out. Yeah. If you're wondering, it's just Lucy down here. I'll try to show her to you guys. There she is. See? Oh, you're a spoiled brat. Yeah. So she says, that was the cheapest peasant sold, LOL. The second trio walked for 75. There was a single Elliott male that walked for 95. We have three auctions within two hours and have three a year. Lynn says, New Zealand trio and a California trio. Aaron says, we have lion head Flemish giants. Mini lops for pet breeding and New Zealand's for meat. We also have New Zealand reds that are meat and pets. That's cool. I'm starting a double war, a double think this guinea pig endeavor. Because rabbits breed faster than guinea pigs. Aaron says, I like the Californians because they are so calm. Jesse says, and one that's an hour away every Wednesday. They have sheep, goats. They also do caged animals at the end. That's cool. The only problem with auctions, you don't know how old the animals are. I'm thinking of making a little um, play area for the guinea pigs. That way it'd be easier for me to pick them up in the cage they bite. They can go in a corner and bite. But if they're out in the open, I can just scoop them up. Aaron says, what's the chances of timing an auction after Quellcon? What's a few more hours on the road? Iowa is that far from Ohio, considering how far I'm driving. Katrina seemed to have got off the computer, Aaron. Where'd your lovely wife go? This is the put in the freezer that dressed out five pounds this year last spring. Uh, 
That sounds good. Karen says she's watching and digging up the rest of the sweet potatoes. Why sit and watch you and her? <laughs> you listen to me and watch her. As he says, for rabbits, Loretta has a trail of many rats, and I have a pair of hollow mops that I also picked up at the auction. Those are to sell as pets. I'm looking for a champagne or cream for meat our rabbits. Cream de Argents. Well, you can probably get some cream de Argents from Whiskey Tango Farms. But I know you'd be paying good price. You won't get them at auction price. Jesse says, for rabbits, oh, okay, I already read that. I thought somebody said something since then. Jesse says, Jesse, I really want to add champagne rabbits. How's the fur on the champagnes? Uh, is the fur good? So she says, at Aaron, the fall auctions are in September, so possibly, lol. They are weekends, so you'd have to come up a week before or stay an extra week. Aaron says, they are beautiful, so I think their fur would make nice things. Yeah, because that's what I want. I like to do dual purpose on everything I can. You guys already know how how much of the quail I use up. The only thing that's thrown away is the actual intestines, the bowel itself. But that usually gets thrown to Lucy because it's fresh, so she she eats that up right away while I'm processing. Everything else goes into the freeze dryer. I use the uh, the feet. I dry the I freeze dry the feet, the legs, the innards, the wings, the heads, and that's all for Lucy or crafting. I'll freeze dry the meat after I cook it because I don't like how it rehydrates because the can get to the under muscle of the breast rehydrate it unless it's unless they've been debunked justice says i don't mind paying for quality auctions i pay cheap prices since you are taking a gamble on what you are getting yeah because you don't know if they're too old for breeding or 
or if they're unable to breed or or there are problem with them when you get them at an auction. So get hold, Jesse, get hold of Kristen or Brandon and ask you if they'll ship you rabbits if you want cream de argents. Or get hold of um, Jasmine Bass. And if she's got anything that she'd ship to you. Or get hold of George at my shire and see if he has anything. Because I don't know what all, what type of rabbits he has. Let's see. Quail have, can have babies faster than rabbits. Rabbits are a heck of a lot faster than guinea pigs. How many weeks are rabbits when you process them? Jesse says the lots I pay five dollars for the buck with a pedigree. The doe's supposed to be bred. I paid seven dollars for her. Did she have a letter? How many weeks from birth are rabbits when you call them? Usually about 14 weeks. Okay, so. So they're hatching. I mean, their incubation period is about 12 days longer than quail. And their growth is about, let's see, eight to ten weeks for yeah so they're not much shorter than quail i mean not much longer jesse says i just got her last saturday they said the ninth is when she was bred so a few weeks before i know for sure rabbits are norm normally 12 to 16 weeks for prior size that's good that's uh, Glenn says about 14 weeks, so he got right in between you, Jesse. Whereas quail are good to eat at eight weeks, and that's only um, four to six more weeks for rabbits, but you usually have, yeah.
So if I don't have baby guinea pigs by New Year's, I put them their breeding sets up, then I guess I'll go on to quail. I mean, uh, rabbit, rather. But it says, last spring, I was getting 10 to 12 average per doe. Sweet. Are you breeding now, Glenn? So she should. So by the 8th of November, you should have kits on the ground, Jesse. Are you breeding them now, Glenn? Just as a loving tradition did a video comparing the cost of raising rabbits and quail. I think it was last year. Yeah. I'll have to look, watch that again because... I know um, 15 quail can go through three pounds of food a day. No, six pounds. Six pounds of food a day. Liz says, the summer was really hot. Just had four that gave me 20 last week. Hope the numbers come up next cycle. I think they will if the weather's getting cooler. I'm not sure where you live, Glenn. But the weather is getting cooler. Pardon me a minute, you guys. I got to blow my nose. I'm all congested. There, that's a little better. A lot of people don't breed in the summer. They wait until the fall to start breeding. And they breed all winter and um, spring. And give them the summer off because it gets too hot. Well, yeah, it's about time to go. Lucy really needs to go out. She's back bugging me again, which means I need out, Mommy. And Liz says you don't breed them in the summer. The heat really affects the buck's sterility. That's what I thought. So, y'all have a blessed week. And hopefully my show will be live tomorrow. If not, I'll see you next week and see you on Facebook during the week. Have a blessed day.